Welcome inside TD Place Arena for the 15th edition of the Capital Hoops Classic between the University of Ottawa GGs and the Carlton Ravens. A matchup of two nationally ranked teams. Carlton Ravens in second place. The GGs coming in at number eight. Both teams sitting at 15 and two on the season. I'm Chris Curries and live on OUA TV and CBC Sports. I'm joined by Gary Gallimore for this call between the two Ottawa universities. Welcome Gary and tell the viewers what they have to look forward to here through tonight. Thank you, Chris. Well, as you mentioned, we have two nationally ranked teams scoring off in the national capital tonight. Both teams are really good. And I think tonight what, what you need to expect is uh, some good basketball. Tonight, the uh, U-Ottawa GGs are playing out with their big, playing without their star player, Bridget Lefavre Okanku. But the, the big thing is all the other players need to step up and uh, be strong and competitive for the team. We expect a great game from both sides. And right now, we're just sitting back and uh, watching the action take place. A great start for the GGs, that first three from Sazokan. A quick answer back from Urban for the Ravens, so we have a 3-2 early lead taking place here. The Capital Hoops Classic at TD Place Arena, home of the Ottawa 67s here in the Capital. And Renault for three from the corner, just off target, fighting for that board. Ravens come down with it out the other way. And a nice steal by Sazokan. And up quickly, here's Katumbai, he found a space. And a bucket is good. So GG's left to right on your screen in their white jerseys, home jerseys. Going right to left with the ball right now are the Ravens in their black threads. Oksana Gushi Provence with the rebound gets it to Sizokin on the floor here for the GG. Sizokin, Payne, Katumbayi. Oksana Gushi Provence and Renault. We get a whistle here. Our first foul of the evening is called on the Ravens. So far, Chris, I think the, the, the GGs are off to a great start. They're aggressive. Last week we saw them play against Queens. I felt like they were a little bit too passive, but, but tonight they're attacking early, and so far they've been productive offensively. So hopefully they continue and continue to build on this lead for the rest of the game. Yeah, coming off a tough loss to Queens last weekend and again missing Brigitte Lefebvre Okonkwo. Maybe a little bit worried at the start, but they've come out firing here. Payne with the jumper, 7-2. The quick lead here for the GGs. Pokernik loses it as she goes up. Urban, the little jumper here, just off target, rolls out by Urban. Katumbai to Suzokin. Katumbai drives baseline, has nowhere to go, has to turn back. And a turnover goes the other way for the Ravens. Drives baseline, here's Kisa Camp. Gets it back out beyond the three. The triple taken and made by Kiana Jad Poulain. And that's a tough one, Chris, because right there we saw Katumbai turn the ball over. A big thing for the GGs tonight, they have to protect the basketball and keep control of the basketball. Turnover leads to an open three-point shot. Both of these teams, as mentioned, 15 and two on the year. Queens in that division as well, also with a very strong record. Jumper made by Natsuki. So good offensive start continuing now for the GGs. And again, a tough division in the OUA East. These games such magnified importance. Corner triple off target, but Kisa Camp the rebound. Poulain loses the handle. Coach Jolie calling for a double dribble, not going to get it. And rattles out Ravens with an offensive board. We're going to get a jump ball called here, or no, it looks like we're going to get a foul called. I would have to agree with Coach Jolie there. There definitely was a double dribble there. The player looked like they lost the ball, picked it up, dribbled again. Also, and we're in here, Kisa Camp. The triple off target, but the ball bounces out. We're going to get loose ball. And Savannah Provo, first time checking in. And Katubai gets it up quickly. That's well short. Rebound by Urban, who leads this team in rebounds at almost 11 a night. 
Pokernik, who leads the team in scoring, nearly 17. Dorcas Buiza guarded by Gucci Pavache. Nowhere to go over that length again. They're going to call the travel that time. That was great defense by Gucci Provencher. She stayed on her feet, kept her hands up, and made it difficult for the Carlton player who then made a mad, bad decision, lost her footing, and ended up in the travel. Great defense, Oksana. Katumbai guarded by Pokernik. Six minutes left in this first quarter. Katumbai has it back. She steps back for three and rattles out. Board goes for the Ravens. And once again, that's Urban. Up quickly into the corner. Nowhere to go. And they get it back for Pokernik, who's got some space. Stops and pops, but well short. And Natsuki gets the board. Natsuki calling out the play. Gets it back. Thought about the three, but drives. Works around the Pegushi Pavanche for three. And a nice attempt by Natsuki. And once again, Chris, you have to love the energy that the GGs are playing with. They're aggressive on defense. They're aggressive offensively, and they're just playing hard right out the gates. And the three made by Pokernik cuts the GG's lead down to one. That one's from straightaway center. Provo dribbling into a double team, gets it out quickly. And we'll get a whistle here called on the Ravens. Wholesale substitutions here for the GGs. Here's Diulio driving. She's got some space off glass. Beautiful finish with the left hand. Buisa, guarded by Natsuki, drives with her right hand, cuts to her left, out to Pokernik beyond the triple. Buisa drives, spins, not able to finish. And he gets knocked out of bounds. It will be GG's ball, their possession. The ball gets to Natsuki. She brings it across midcourt. Savannah Prova drives into traffic, gets it into the corner. Ianazzo for three. It's going to be off target. But fighting for the offensive bound gets knocked out of bounds. Refs conferring, and it will be Ravens' ball. Once again, a matchup between two top 10 ranked teams, the second ranked Ravens. Eighth ranked GGs. This is the 15th meeting between these two teams on the Capital Hoops Classic. Overall lifetime matchup. Nine wins for the Ravens, five wins for the GGs. How big is a rivalry game like this? Because this is a rivalry game. Rival, rival, rivalry games are huge, especially when they're happening in your hometown because. You know, it's even, it um, doesn't matter who wins in the end, but it goes to the, it's bragging rights, right? It all turns out to who, who gets all, gets the most wins, and it looks better for the program. It look, the players are happy. You always want to beat your crosstown rivals, and that's what this is tonight. This is a huge game for both teams, and the winner leaves with bragging rights tonight. Natsuki for three, and just rattles out. Kisa Camp with the board. 
and the bragging rights last year. Ravens won by a score of 63 to 43. That took place at Carleton University. Year before, during the pandemic, season was canceled. There was no game in 2020. It was the only other time it took place here at TD Place Arena. And the GGs won that one by a score of 77 to 75. So that one was close. But a lot of whole new lineups here on these two teams. Natsuki fights around Buisa. She's got some space. Diulio sets a pick. Suzokin with one second left on the shot clock. Has to put one up. And we're going to get a whistle for a travel. That's going to be on the Ravens' Kunku. And that was good uh, court awareness by Wendy Bukep. She, she stood in front of the defender, the, the Carlton player. Didn't see her, turned around and saw somebody there, was spooked a little bit. Turned out to be a travel. Great defense and great recognition. Inatso to inbound. Out to Katumbai, guarded by Pokernik. There's a height advantage there. They throw it cross court to Renault. Thought about the three, but ends up cutting inside. Almost a nice finish with the left hand, just a bit too short. Rebound goes to Kisakamp, and the Ravens take it the other way. Kisakamp. The three taken and made by Kiana Jad Poulain. So Ravens 13 11 have a lead now. Katumbai into Bukep. At the free throw line, gets poked out of her arms, and that's going to be a turnover. Three very early in the shot clock, taken and missed by Kung Ku. And Renault slows it down, waits for her teammates to join her. And ends up finding Katun by Nadine now. Thought about the three, but lost the handle. And then she's going to reach and get a whistle for a foul. GG started off great there in the first quarter there, Chris. But it looks like they're kind of cooling down a little bit. I think the thing is when you make substitutions, players that are coming into the game, they have to be aggressive. They have to maintain the same intensity the starters were keeping up. And right now we seem to that, that seems to be fading a little bit. Hopefully they could pick it back up and get some stops and get back out in transition and get some points. Quick bucket there by Teresa Donato. So Ravens now with a four-point lead. With a minute left in this first quarter. Inazzo puts up a hope and a prayer, does not have it answered. And another whistle as she holds on. Savannah Provo steps in for the GGs. And again, 15 to 11, your score, Ravens up four. They have the ball, 45 seconds left in this first quarter here at TD Place Arena. And a big block by Gushi Provencher came out of nowhere. And that's something we were accustomed to seeing Oksana do. She, she's a great shot blocker. She's a great defensive presence in the paint. And right there, she showed it that last possession. Bueno, thought about the floater, gets it into Gushi Provencher. Not able to finish. Ball rattles around. And the Ravens have it with 20 seconds left. And now no shot clock, so they'll have an opportunity for the last possession. Pokernik guarded by Renault. Turn, spins, the little jumper off target. And that's going to end the first quarter. Quick paced, not much stoppages, 15 to 11 the score. Back in a moment here on OUA TV and CBC Sports.
We're back here at TD Play Serena on OUA TV and CBC Sports as we gear up for the start of the second quarter here between the Carleton Ravens, who've got 15 points, and the University of Ottawa GGs, who are down with 11. And Suzokin after a near steal for three. The Katumbai knocks it in, and we're back to a one-point game. So great start to the second quarter here for the GGs. Absolutely, Chris. They started the game the same way in the first quarter. They were aggressive. They were knocking down their open shots. And it's good to see them right back at it right here at the second start of the second quarter. Urban, the uh, little eight-footer, rattled out. GGs with an opportunity here to take the lead. Sazokin into Savannah Provo. Back to Natsuki. Works around a pick by Emily Payne. And the jumper off target, but Gucci Provencher uses her size. And we've got a three in the corner, and it's made. Oksana. That was impressive, Chris, because she got the rebound. I thought she was right under the basket. She should have went up. She would have gotten an end one, but she worked the ball around. She was open at the three-point line, and instead of getting two, she got a three-point shot. Excellent play by Oksana. So great start to the second quarter here for the GGs. Back-to-back -back threes. And Carlton now looking to go inside. They play a little inside out. A little jumper here. Short one gets the friendly roll. That's Poulain, who's had a great start to this one for the Ravens. Provo on the ground. Trying to find someone. And ends up working through a backcourt violation. And that's one thing that Gigi's have to keep in mind, Chris. They have to protect the basketball. We saw them lose a couple possessions in the first quarter where the Carlton Ravens came back and got easy butt baskets off that. Protect the basketball, but continue being aggressive on offense. Pokernick got fouled there, and she'll head to the line for two. So this is our first free throws of the evening here in the Capitol Hoops Classic. First one knocked in for Callie, who again leads this Ravens squad nearly 17 points tonight. This team coached by Danny Sinclair in her second season behind the bench in her third year total. And the Ravens now putting on a little bit of a pressure here. Oksana has it, gets it to Natsuki, who's now got some space as she goes in. Had the right idea for Natsuki, just not the execution. Ends up falling a little bit short, and Pokernik now guarded by Natsuki, working some offensive magic, the left-handed finish, just a bit too strong, and the board goes to Oksana, up to Nadine quickly. And credit uh, Chizokin with the great defense, forcing a tough lefty, lefty shot, got the rebound for the Gigi's, and here we are again. Ball gets knocked out of bounds. It will be Ravens' possession, much to the chagrin of 
the Gigi's bench right in front of where we're sitting. Looked like it went off of Carlton's foot there on the rebound. That's what Oksana was trying to tell the ref, but to no avail. It's all in the game, as they say, Chris. Sometimes the refs get it, sometimes they miss those calls. Unfortunately, that time they missed that one. Pokernik guarded by Nadine Katumbay, and that gets stolen. An errant pass goes into the arms of Natsuki. And she has it now for the GGs. They started with those two quick trays. And now trying front of their bucket here. That one's a little bit off. Some contact there. Oksana could not follow through. Buisa falls down and we've got a three taken and just missed by Urban. And Savannah Provo up quickly to Nadine Katumbai. Natsuki for three. No good, but Urban was in strong position for that rebound. We're going to get a travel. So great defensive effort by the GGs. Absolutely, Chris. That was great recognition by Katumbai. She stood her ground, kept her hands up, forced the GGs to first force the Ravens to turn the basketball over under their basket. Sometimes it's all about a little extra pressure, throws off uh, an opposing player, and you get a possession back. So Delio now in, checks in. The GGs look to drive. Natsuki had some space, but ends up throwing it away. Thought Emily Payne was there, but just outside of her outstretched arms. Buisa. Almost gets knocked out, goes to Kieskamp, back to Buisa. And looks like that one's going to go out of bounds. GG's will get the ball back. We've got a little over six minutes left in this second quarter. Ravens up 19 to 17. Got a double team, get it to Diulio. She knocks down the straightaway triple. Yep. Gigi's lead once again. Great recognition by Yanatso. She saw the double team coming, she kicked it out and led to an open three-pointer. That's what you do when there's pressure, get rid of the basketball and get it up the court. And straight away, a lot of time, easy shot. And we'll take a pause after a timeout for the Ravens. Welcome back to OUA.TV and CBC Sports, where we are live here at TD Place Arena for the Capital Hoops Classic, the 15th edition between these two women's teams. Carlton holding a 9-5 advantage lifetime. But the GG's up one this evening. It's 20-19. Pokernik settles and tries to drive. She's got some space. On the easy bucket.
Sazokin able to cross midcourt. Guarded by Buisa, loses the handle, but ends up diving for it. Gets it back, and we're going to get the whistle. And they're going to call a jump ball here, I believe. A quick conferring for the refs. So possession arrow was pointed towards Carlton, so they have it now. Buisa, guarded by Ianazzo. Cross court to Pokernik, who's in the corner. She takes a contested triple. Ends up getting it back. Throws it cross court. The drive, the jumper made by Teresa Donato. And that basket could also be, the basket could also be credit to Pokernik because she missed that first shot. She hustled after the basketball and gave her team a second position, and they capitalized on it. And there's a foul there by Carlton as well. Yanatso has to fight to get across court. Pokernik with the steal was hounding her and she goes up quickly with the left hand. She gets the whistle and she'll head to the line. In a situation like that, the defender definitely wants the person with the ball to be making multiple moves and that's what's happening. Each time the GGs end up making multiple moves, ends up in a turnover. The bottom line is just beat that person either with the pass or with a speed dribble and get the ball up the court. Pokernik to the line. And she makes both of her free throws. Ravens now up five. And Katumbayi now in, a sure-handed dribbler. Again, hounded by Pokernik, out to the corner to Provo. Oksana for three. And that one's going to be a bit too strong. But it gets knocked out of bounds. So good effort on the second chance. GG's get possession. And absolutely. And like I said, that's what Katumbai did in that possession. She didn't spend too much time dribbling the ball back and forth, but attacked the basketball and able to kick it out. Provo's looking for the three. But only four on the shot clock now. Suzokin drives. Has to finish with the left hand. Good on her to get the rim, but that was a tough ask. It was a tough, it was a tough take for sure, but great defense by the Ravens as well. Pokernik from three straight away. And we're going to get a timeout called here by Coach Jolie as the GGs will want to talk about this one now down eight. So we'll back in a moment here on OUA.TV and CBC Sports.
Welcome back here to the Capital Hoops Classic women's matchup between the Ravens and the GGs. Ravens up eight. Gari, what has been going on the last few minutes? Carlton on a good run. What's What have they been doing right? What do the GGs need to fix to swell the bleeding here? So at the moment, it looks like Carlton's playing a soft press. They want the, the ball handler for the GGs bringing the ball up. They want them to be dribbling side to side, making secondary moves. It looks like at times they're sending a second defender to potentially trap the basketball. But mostly they're looking for turnovers, and so far they've caused enough turnovers to push the ball in transition and get some easy baskets. And that's right now, you see the game 28-20. to 20. That's what they've been doing. They've been effe effective defensively and turning their defense into offense. A three in the corner, just off target, but almost gets knocked out of bounds. Stays in, that's Kisa Camp. Right up into the arms of Payne, and she'll get whistled for a foul. Kisa Camp hits the first one from the line. Does not get the second one, but Buisa gets it back and they swing it. And a little short jumper made from Teresa Donato. And that was great recognition by Donato. Gigi's defender running at her full speed. Just a little ball fake, one dribble into a mid-range pull-up, automatic. Katumbayi now hands it to Provo. Back to Katumbayi. They're going to want to get something together here. Goksana for three. A bit too strong, and we're going to get a whistle here. That looks like a hold from the Ravens. And that was a great job by Emily Payne getting possession. Position. She was right under the basket, anticipating the offensive rebound. Ended up getting herself a foul. Now the GGs have another possession. Great job, Emily Payne. Natsuki hounded by Buisa. Emily Payne has it now into Oksana, who takes the little elbow jumper. Looked good in the air, just rattled out. So shots just are not falling right now for the GGs. Down 11 with a little less than two and a half minutes left to go in this first half. The Buisa for the Ravens drives, kicks to Pokernik in the corner. And again, that one rattles up, but she fights for the rebound. And we're going to lead to a jump ball. Great job by Katubai getting to the ball and tying it up. But one thing I'm going to say, though, we've, we've seen what Porkinik can do from the three-point line. I think Katubai is leaving her way too open too much, opening, opening up too much of the basketball. She needs to stay home a little bit more so she could be there on the catch for the closeout and make a force her to make a tough shot or put the ball on the, on the ground. Payne stops the little jumper. Ends up fighting for the own rebound, and that one goes to Gushi Pavanche, who lost it but got it back, and now we've got Katumbayi for three, and she hits it. That Wait. was a much-needed shot, Chris. Much-needed shot because the GGs look like they're in a bit of a scoring drought there. The pressure from the Ravens have thrown their offense off a little bit, but now they've got that open shot. Hopefully they could get something rolling to the end of the quarter. Yeah, it leads to a timeout called by Carlton. So back in a moment here on OUA TV and CBC Sports. So, Gary, that was a big shot there from the GGs to kind of end that run for the Ravens. Absolutely. The Ravens have been on a tear for a little bit. You saw them push the lead to 31-20. to 20. Big shot by, by Katumbai was much needed because the GGs were on a, was on a bit of a drought. 
but hopefully this could spark a little bit more going finishing this quarter finish the quarter strong and get something going into the second half and you heard the crowd let out a little bit of a roar there and there as well for a nice block from Provence, but there is going to be a whistle called as the fans start to fill the seats as everyone braves the cold here in Ottawa to make it for some great basketball here between the Ravens and GGs. Absolutely. Kisa Camp once again splits her free throws. And the Gigi's head the other way. Here's Katum Bai. Sending Suzuki the other way, and we're going to get a whistle called away from the ball. Still only third team foul, and we've got a little less than a minute and a half left in this second quarter. Payne drives baseline. Not able to get it, but knocks it out, and Buisa has it now for the Ravens. Donato, nowhere to go. Has to give it to Pokernik. Who drives, cannot finish. And Gucci Provence has the rebound. GG's now with less than a minute left to go in this first half. Down nine. Suzokin drives, tries to kick it, gets knocked down. But Provo has it now into Emily Payne. Drive, spins to her left and to her right. And we get a bit of a late whistle call, but she'll head to the line. That was a great job by Emily Payne using her primary and second, secondary post moves to get that foul. Almost looked like he wasn't going to be called, but the refs caught it at the last second, which is good. Two free throws for the GGs. So Payne hits them both. Quick substitution here for the Ravens and checks in Kunku and out goes Gabrielle Francis. And just like that, Chris, seven point game, just over 30, 39 seconds left in the game. Right now the GGs just have to make a strong stand. Don't give them anything easy. It'd be good if the score could remain neutral going into this game or they could get another stop and turn it into a basket. But right now, make sure the, the Carlton Ravens don't get another basket. And GG's go the other way now after the missed opportunity here. And only but a second difference between the shot clock and game clock. And driving now, Suzokin, we're going to get a whistle. And I believe it's for stepping out of bounds. So Ravens now will have a shot for the last possession here. 16 seconds left and counting. Just get a stop, keep the, keep the ball in front of you. Make sure they don't get an easy basket, if any baskets at all. Pokernik drives, she's got some space. The little jumper, no good. Three seconds left, ball on the ground. And we're gonna get a late whistle before the clock goes off and we'll get a couple of late Carlton Ravens free throws with less than a second left. So that one is tough to see. Absolutely, Chris. That's a tough way to end the, end the quarter or end the half. I thought it was good defense, but nonetheless, they weren't able to secure the basketball. Ravens got the ball again, which gave them an opportunity to draw the foul or score the basket. Unfortunately, they're going to the line for two free throws. So the official call is with .2 seconds left. Two free throws for Kisa Camp. And this time she hits them both. So with 0.2 seconds left, that's what our final score of the half is bound to be, 34 to 26. 
And it is. So first half of the Capital Hoops Classic of 2023 between the Ravens and the GGs is 34 to 26. Ravens will head into the, the pause with an eight point lead. So we will, we will be back here on OUA.TV and on CBC Sports for second half action.
And we're back live here, OUA TV and CBC Sports for the second half of our Capital Hoops Classic between the University of Ottawa GGs and the Carlton Ravens. Ravens up 34 to 26. I'm Chris Curry. He's here once again with Gary Gallimore. Gary, what did you like in that first half? Chris, so far this game hasn't disappointed. Both teams I find are playing very hard. So far the GG started the game red hot in that first quarter, which was good. They were making their open shots. They were moving the ball around. But the Ravens applied some pressure, which forced some turnovers. And uh, so far the Ravens were able to capitalize off those turnovers, which led to the lead that they have now. The bottom hey. line is, sorry, nope, the bottom line is whoever can protect the basketball the best and capitalize will continue to have the advantage. And so far the Ravens have done a great job of that. And that offensive board had there by the Ravens. And first bucket there for Buisa. And another rebound for the Ravens, and they have it now. Pokernick up quickly into the corner. And we're going to get a whistle here. See what the call is on. It's going to be on Carlton. I think it's on Jacqueline Urban. And that's her third personal, so that's a tough go early on to get that third foul for Urban. Absolutely. Urban seems to be a key component of this Ravens team, and to, for her to have three fouls just to start the third quarter is crucial. Hopefully she can stay out of foul trouble for the rest of the game. Suzokin drives, gets it back out, but that one's stolen. Going the other way, Kiana Jad Poulain. She's got all the space, takes it in herself. So quick couple of buckets here for Carlton. And that's kind of what I was talking about, Chris, protecting the basketball. Right there, the turnover led to an easy two, trans two points in transition. Carlton's doing a great job forcing turnovers, but GG's need to do a better job protecting the ball. Cross court now, Katumbayi, the corner triple, knocks it in, so great response for the GG's. Absolutely. If you're going to respond, that's it right there. Great response by Katumbayi. Bucket just short, strong rebound by Emily Payne. Katumbai not able to make it two in a row from the corner, ends up hitting the deck after that missed opportunity. And just a quick adjustment, that one from Katumbai is going to be a long two foot on the line, so 36-28 our score. Pokernick in the near corner, she puts one up. A little bit off to the right, but a strong rebound by Urban. We're going to get a jump ball. Even though Pokernick hasn't been connecting that consistently from three-point line, she's still looking to shoot the three ball. I think the GGs need to do a better job of recognizing that and being there on the closeout. Otherwise, it's gonna, she, she's going to get on fire, and it could change the course of this game. That possession arrow pointed towards the GGs. And into Suzuka now, who carries the ball across midcourt. Drive, she's got some space. Ends up bringing it back, Uchi Provencher. Drives, loses the handle, ends up getting stolen. And stolen right back. Katumbayi with it for the GGs now. Up to Gucci Provencher, stops and pops from 20 feet. Bit too short. A bit of a rush shot, in my opinion, by Gucci Provencher. You had back-to-back -back turnovers. That was a great opportunity to slow it down and run your offense and get something good. Good pass to Kieskamp, ends up getting fouled. No, no call, that's going to be a uh, travel on Kieskamp. So it was a nice find by Poulain. Ends up hitting Kieskamp right in the chest, but just ends up not corralling it right away, and then leads to a travel. So nice break for the GGs. So we've got a 10-point lead. Suzokin, and she knocks one down from long range. Long range two again, foot on the line. And that's great recognition by Suzokin. You're pushing the ball in transition. The defense is backing up. If they're not going to guard you, great decision. Stop and pop and make it count. Quick foul there from the GGs. Pokernick initiating the offense, works around a screen, drops it off, and they do it again. She gets it back from the feed from Donato. And the corner three is made from Kunku. 
from Gatineau, Quebec. And that was great ball movement by the Ravens, working the ball around until they found the open shooter. That was a great shot by Kun Kun, knocking it down. Sazokin drives, finds Diulio. She gets fouled, and she will head to the line. So a nice find by Sazokin. Delio in good position and she'll head to the line now. A couple of made free throws for you, Ottawa. Katumbai trying to deny Pokernik the ball. And she gets it. Pokernik goes right by. The three from the corner is made. Back to back for the Ravens. That one is Donato. Pokernik is such a threat with the basketball. And I think that's what the Gigi's players recognize. They're zoning up towards her when she puts the ball on the ground. But she's doing a great job of finding the open person for the open shot. They just need to recognize that and stay home on the penetration. Once the help is there, get back to your person and stop the ball. Katumbai not able to corral the three there. Pokernik driving, not able to finish too strong off glass, and Provo has it now going the other way. To Nadine Katumbai, he thought about a three. Back to Provo. They drop it into Emily Payne, who spins, drops it to Dulio, who was on the ground, but ends up going a bit too strong, and there's Urban up quickly the other way. They've got some numbers, but Urban slows things down. Back to Pokernik, the quarterback of this offense. She stops and pops for three right away. And that's going to force a timeout. Great, great shot by Pokernik for the Ravens. And that extends this lead to 15. Absolutely. She's tough, and she's, she can make those shots. Just got to get up on her and not let her see the light of day. So three triples for the Ravens, and we get a timeout here and back momentarily. Forty-seven, thirty-two. the score now. Ravens up 15 after a trio of long range shots. So blowing this game wide open is Carlton. Both of these teams sitting at 15 and two, looking to get that 16th victory on the season. Suzokin stops for three. And that one's a missed opportunity for the GGs. Pokernik drives, kicks it back out. Urban for three. Not able to make it four in a row. And Coach Jolie imploring the GGs to get up quickly. Suzokin back to Diulio. Drives and kicks to Katimbai. He finds Bukep, who's not able to finish with the right hand. And Urban corrals it for the Ravens. Pokernik drives. And it's going to head out of bounds. Foot on the line was Zarina Duvnak. Ravens are setting up in that, that soft zone just to slow things down a little bit. I think what the, the GGs need to do is attack that early. 
The Ravens just clearly want to use that to eat some time off the clock and force them into a rush offensive possession. Right there. But that was good recognition, good find, and good finish by Oksana. Yeah, great find by Suzokin. Picks up another assist. A couple of points for Gucci Provencher. And here's the Ravens once again. That offense initiated so beautifully by Pokernik. She finds Keith Camp, who spins into a double team. Spins away, and we're going to get a whistle, and she'll head to the line for two. Pokernik is definitely the engine behind this Ravens team. She just does so much with that basketball. You know she's a threat with the basketball to either attack the basket and score or attack, draw the defender, and kick it out to her open shooters. So far, she's done a great job of doing both. She's gotten points in the paint, and she's gotten three-point shots for her teammates. Keith Camp, perfect from the line on that one, two for two. As the Ravens back up by 15, 49 to 34. Payne drives, she had some space to herself, and she takes it. Bucket. Great recognition by Emily Payne. They gave her the ball to break, to break the zone. She got the ball up. She hesitated for a second, but made a great move and a strong finish. Two points for the GGs. Great, great job, Emily Payne. And Buisa throws it into traffic, ends up having into the arms of Emily Payne. Gigi's now the other way after the turnover. Here's Suzokin. Drives to her left. Stops. The little jumper is good from 13 feet. And we'll get a timeout called by Coach Sinclair for the Ravens. As we take one more look at that one, Suzokin just goes to her left. Stops. Pops. A beautiful shot. And with that, We'll head to break. Three minutes and 11 seconds left in this third quarter of the Capital Hoops Classic. University of Ottawa GGs with 38, the Carlton Ravens with 49. And the Ravens in their black uniforms with possession right now, GGs in white on defense. We've got Donato driving, a little bit short, but Urban almost had the rebound, gets knocked away. Suzokin brings up some speed, finds a cutting Emily Payne, not able to finish. That would have cut the lead to single digits. Keys camp. Guarded by Payne. Ends up getting by her. Fights through contact. And she gets the bucket to go. That was a great move by Keys camp. Attacking the paint. Getting in the basket for those two easy points. Gucci Provencher for three. And she hits it. That's just going to be a spark for the GGs. Now we've got a 10-point contest. It was 15, now to 10. A much more manageable number for you, Ottawa. The pace of the game has definitely stepped up a little bit more for the GGs, but both teams are playing extremely hard, pushing the ball in transition and trading baskets at the moment. The corner three from Kunku, too strong. But another offensive board from Keys Camp, and she goes up and under. Strong take for the bucket. GGs now down 12. Another big play by Keyscamp. Offensive rebound and going to the finesse reverse layup. Great play by Keyscamp. And now she gets a deflection and turnover for her team. Tough play for Natsuki Suzokin. But pro and they get it up quickly here. Donato thought about it. 
A nice steal. We've got a two on one. Here's Alyssa Provo. Drops it to Natsuki Suzuko. Makes up for that last one and gets the bucket to go. We've got a 10 point contest once more. Great pace, great tempo. The crowd is loving it. Everybody's getting up on their feet. It's great to see. Both teams are playing hard and playing tough. Great game so far. Urban drops it off to Donato. Back to Callie Pokernik, who thought about the three but gets it into Keyes Camp. Guarded by Gucci Pavanche and loses the handle and up the other way it goes Savannah Provo this time. Now drops it off to Gucci Pavanche. Got some space and just a bit short, but almost looking for that rebound. But we're going to get called for a whistle. That's going to be called on Gucci Pavanche. Yeah, cannot do that over the back reach, whatever you want to call it. They're going to call that one. Absolutely. Once they see you wrap that player up and you're hanging over them, they're definitely going to call that foul. Ten-point lead. We've got a minute left in this third quarter here on OUA TV and CBC Sports. It's the Capital Hoops Classic. Two 15 and two teams, both top ranked in U Sports. Good defense by Katubai. They swing it. Pokernik is in the corner. She takes the three. Bit too strong. But another offensive board for the Ravens. Buisa hits the deck. Katubai takes it the other way. She's got some speed. Provo takes the three. But Bukep, a strong offensive rebound. And we're going to get a whistle. That's going to be a foul on the Ravens. So both teams still not in bonus. Only three team fouls this quarter, so it's going to be inbounded on the baseline. Nadine has it, gets the ball handed from the ref. And into Alyssa Provo, who drives. Beautiful left-handed finish for Alyssa, seeing some of her first action this quarter and providing a bit of a spark. Shot clock turned off now. 10 seconds left. Keys Camp guarded by Payne. The little turnaround jumper. No good. And there's going to be Emily Payne with it. Three seconds left. Savannah Pro, we're going to have to take one from long distance. And just rattles out. So a great finish for the GGs to this quarter. 53 to 45 our score. Ravens go into the last pause here for this fourth quarter. Up eight. So we'll be back momentarily here on OUA.TV and CBC Sports.
Back now for the fourth quarter action between the University of Ottawa Gigi's and the Carlton Ravens. 53 to 45, Carlton lead the way here in the fourth quarter of the Capital Hoops Classic. Carlton have the ball as we have 10 minutes left. Donato to Pokernik. Pokernik drives, has to spin back. And a big block met at the apex from Gucci Provencher. Great job by Gucci Provencher using her length to deflect that shot. She does a great job in the paint, great defense. Carlton turns the button, forces a turnover, and is back the other way. Donato driving again, nowhere to go though, back to the outside. Here's Pokernik who drives and finds Kieskamp. Almost had the foot on the line, but ends up going up and under. A beautiful finish. Kieskamp definitely has a great touch around the basket. We saw this is the second layup. We see, go, see her go through the reverse layup. Has a great touch in the paint, and they're doing a great job of getting her the ball. Kieskamp leads the way with 16. Gucci Provencher almost had another triple, but ends up getting poked back to her. And she thought about trying again. And ends up going for probably a tougher shot, but she hits that one. So Gigi's answer back, still eight point deficit. And that's just what you have to do, Chris. You just have to be aggressive. You gotta attack the basket and put the ball in the basket right now, being down eight points. It's go time, you have to be productive if you wanna win this game. Very manageable for the Gigi's, but also for Carlton. A couple of baskets could really blow this wide open. Here's Donato now finding a cutting poker neck. Knocked out of bounds by Emily Payne. Great defense by the Gigi's, great position by uh, Emily Payne being there to help on the pass and able to knock it out. So they're just gonna have to hold on a second. They're just adjusting the shot clock here because it's currently set at zero. as the crowd has really started to pile in. It's a much fuller crowd than it was at opening tip-off. What kind of momentum swings do you really feel once the building gets fuller and the crowd gets louder? How does that affect you as a basketball player? I think we've already seen that, Chris, but like I said, I've said this before, the crowd acts like a six man or a cheerleader on the bench. When you hear the crowd cheering for you and, and pushing you behind, it, get, it gives you a sense of urgency and a little bit more push. And we've seen both teams do that. We've seen the, the pace of the game pick up tremendously. Ravens pushing the ball, Gigi's pushing the ball. For a second there, they were trading baskets back and forth. And I think that was highly influenced by the roar of the crowd. And the ball got stuck between the rim and the backboard. Don't see that too often, but good save from the cleanup crew. Provo drops it off to Suzokin, but that one's going to be a backcourt. And Coach Jolie, not a fan of that call, thought that Suzokin was pushed across. But again, uh, again, Chris, I think the GGs, like I said earlier in this game, they need to get the ball across the court when there's that zone pressure. Once you start going back and forth, dribbling back and forth, it becomes tougher and harder to get the ball. They just need to beat the defender and get the ball over. Okernick drops it off to Urban, drops it off to Buisa with the left hand. Buisa for three, and she hits it. Huge shot for the Ravens, puts them back up by 11. Absolutely, great patience by the Ravens, working the basketball around and get themselves an open three-point shot, now pushing the lead back to 11. Katumbai trying to drive on her right hand, and we'll get a whistle here going to be on the Ravens. Let's see who it's on. It's going to be on number four. That's Callie Pokernick. And credit to Pokernick, Chris. She, she was playing good defense, but just that last minute dig at the basketball led to a foul. Now you have two free throws. And that's the thing. That's one of those things that I would say coaches don't like when you play great defense and you bail out the, off the other player and giving them two free throws. Great job by Katumbai attacking the basket. Katumbai ends up hitting both of her free throws, so We've once again got a nine point lead, so this one's hovering back and forth around that level right now. Gigi's made a pretty good comeback late in the third to get it from 15 down to that point, but Pokernik responds a great shot. 
made from the Ravens. She's got 17. Katumbai to Aksana. And the long range triple is good. Cuts it down to eight. So Gushi's got three from long distance. The jumper no good from the Ravens. We've got to fight for it. Keyscamp has it. She's in the key. A lot of movement. We're going to get a whistle. And that foul is going to be on the Gigi. So two shots coming for the Ravens. Again, Keith Camps just in there battling, giving her team second, out, second chance opportunities with her rebounding. She didn't get the basket that time, but now she's going to the free throw line for two free throws. And Keith Camp has been good from the line today, and she's been there a lot. She's six for eight. Split her first couple of trips. She's been perfect since then. A miss here, so again, commentator's kiss of death. 60 to 52, and again, a lot of sound behind and then you get a roar from the Carlton side of the crowd so a pretty decent even split of fans here tonight from both Ottawa and Carlton Universities Katumbai with it with the GG's down nine trying to drive to her left hand kicks it into the corner gets poked out away Sazokin takes it and she makes it huge three for the GG's gets them within six Pokernik with 17 points tonight, guarded by Katumbai. Pokernik goes to her left, and a big block by Oksana, and the GG's trying to get it up quick. They've got five GG's. Ravens have got four. Suzokin a little bit short. And up the other way, up quickly. Kieskamp not able to finish it. And now the GGs have it, and they're going to slow it down this time as it's transition offense. No good. They're going to set up something. Sazokin, hounded by Buisa, gets it to Diulio, picks up the dribble. And into Savannah Provo, only five on the shot clock. She's going to have to put a little floater up off target. That's going to go out of bounds. So far, Chris, the Gigi's have done a great job changing the momentum in their favor. They're getting stops. They're getting big baskets from key players. And right now, it's just a matter of who wants it more. It's a six-point game. You have just over five minutes left. Both teams are playing hard. It's a matter of who can outlast till the end of the game. And this is what you play for, right? Capital Hoops, Ottawa, Carlton, thousands of fans here at TD Place Arena. Can't ask for much more. Absolutely. It's almost, it almost has a championship game feel, even though it's a regular season game. But these are the kind of games you live for as a player. The big games, big crowd, bright lights, and just playing in front of a, a fantastic, fantastic atmosphere. So definitely a great position to be in if you're a player. And off the miss by Pokernik there. Gets knocked out of bounds. Looked like it went off of Urban, but they did call it off of the GG's refs did. So Ravens have possession. Missed opportunity there for the Ravens, and now the GG's head the other way. They're down six. We've got less than five minutes left in this fourth quarter. Sazokin goes to her left. That one gets poked out away, and Buisa, she goes in on her own. The right hand, she finishes strong. She'll go up for the and one opportunity. Foul by Payne, and Buisa is feeling it. And that's what it is, Chris. As we said earlier, it all comes down to who protects the basketball and who can force turnovers and capitalize off those turnovers. Carlton looking like they're ready to take a little bit of the momentum from Ottawa U. Great defense by Buisa. Great attack, and now she gets two free throws. Or sorry, she gets an end one. Free throw made. And that's going to be a tough one for the GGs. It was down to two possessions. They could have maybe cut it to one. Goes the other way. Now it's a nine-point game, and now the clock becomes the enemy for the GGs. Four and a half minutes left. Katumbai, ball poked out, but gets it back. Hounding defense by Pokernik. Now Diulio. We've got six on the shot clock now. Savannah Provo. Out to Delio. She's got a little bit of space to operate. The little floater quite short, but we do get a whistle called. Didn't hear the whistle, but we do see a call called on Teresa Donato. 
So it looks like it will be a shooting foul. They're at the line and Diulio getting set for a couple of free throws. So Diulio splits from the line. We've now got an eight point contest. Pokernick, the straw that stirs the drink for the Ravens. She's got 17. It's on over 20 attempts, but she's initiated this offense. Kicks it out to Buisa, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. A little bit of a malattentiveness from Buisa. Did not know the clock was going down, and that's going to be a turnover. I think that was great defense by the GGs. They, fo they forced Pokernick to play around with that screen a little too much, not realizing the clock was dimming down, and when she passed it, Donata didn't have a lot of time to take a shot. Great defense by the GGs. So we've got three minutes and 40 seconds left. Provo drives, kicks it into Katimbai. Now into Gucci Pavanche, the little jumper. No good, but the rebound, Pokernick ends up grabbing it. So... Big one for the Ravens now. Again, three minutes and 20 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Capital Hoops Classic. Keep it locked in here on OUA.TV and CBC Sports. And a travel called on Duvnak. So back-to-back -back turnovers for the Ravens. Definitely a timely turnover, Chris. At this stage of the game, Carlton up eight points with just over three minutes let left. It's all about clock management and proper possessions. Right there, they turned the ball over. Now it's a GG's ball, and they still have a chance to push. You've got to protect the basketball because at this stage of the game, it's anybody's game with two possessions left, with and three minutes left. Sorry. And if you're the GG's, you have to start making buckets. But a foul there on, on the Ravens. That's on Buisa. Delio thought about the three. Gucci Provencher drives. The left-handed finish is off target. Diulio goes up looking for a call, doesn't get it. Ravens with the rebound and now Pokernick with it. 14 on the shot clock. Less than two minutes and 40 seconds left. And a whistle called on the GGs. So you see it there, Suzuka just trying to fight through the screen from Urban. Ends up with a bit of a reach. And we get a whistle, stops play, back in possession now, Donato trying to drive. Urban thought about the long two, but that's gonna be a push off. Offensive foul, Diulio, the great take. That was a great job by Diulio, getting in position, making sure she was cutting off the, the penetration. Got, got in the way, got pushed out of the way, and ended up being an offensive foul. I think just a quick conferring here, checking to see if Urban has four or five fouls. I think I heard from Coach Jolie, that's five on her, but I think Coach Sinclair thought it was four, so we're just going to get some quick confirmations here about what's happening, because that would be a big loss if Urban has to come out. And so it is, that is the fifth foul on Jacqueline Urban. So she is gonna be out for the rest of this contest. So big loss for the Ravens.
So GG's with possession now, two and a half minutes left to go. They are down eight, they need points. Ball gets knocked out of bounds, off a leg of a Raven though. Says Suzokin just lost a bit of a handle as it was stolen. Buisa thought she was gonna have it. And they get it in, here's Diulio. Back to Nadine Katumbayi. Drive, she's got a little bit of space, the left-handed floater. Gets her own rebound though. And we're gonna get a jump ball. As Katumbayi hits the deck. So quick conferring here. They send the teams to their separate sides. So getting a little chippy here late in the, late in the fourth. And that's just the competitive spirit of both teams, Chris. Just over two minutes left in the game, eight point game. Both teams want to win this game. The GG's hoping to make a strong push here in these last two minutes, and Ravens hoping to hold on. The important thing though, at this stage of the game, every possession is crucial for the GG's. Eight point, eight point different, just over two minutes. Every possession counts and they have to make them count. And so that's a big call here from the refs. They're gonna call Pokernik for an unsportsmanlike call. So that's gonna be a couple of dead ball free throw opportunities here for Katumbai. So Katumbai hits both. And that is a crucial possession right there, Chris. Getting the unsportsmanlike call. Two free throws made and they get the ball back. So they still have another opportunity to score another basket and chip away at that lead. So now it's officially back to being a two possession game. As well now the GG's are in bonus. So any foul, Gushi Provence, the little jumper just a bit too short. And we're gonna get another whistle. Katumbai hits the deck. I believe it was out of bounds. We're going to just see what the call is. Yes, it's going to be a foot out of bounds. I believe it was on Diulio. as we get the replay here. Um, Katumbai had the ball foot on the line. So now two minutes left. Ravens up six. They would love to see a bucket here. Pokernik guarded by Katumbai. She's trying to lead her to her left. Swings it, and that's Buisa. Nice steal from Katumbai. But slows things down, waiting for some reinforcements. Gucci Pavanche into the corner. Suzokin now. 12 on the shot clock, working on the baseline. Katumbai, and they're going to call a travel. That's a tough. Tough go for the GGs. Definitely a tough one there, Chris. Looked like they had some momentum going there for them. Looked like they had an opportunity to get another basket. Unfortunately, the travel call, turnover, now it's Ravens ball going the other way. And we're gonna get a timeout here called by the Ravens. So we'll take a quick pause. Minute to go in this game. Minute in this timeout, and we'll be back. Minute 19 left to go in this fourth quarter of the Capital Hoops Classic. The Carlton Ravens lead by six. 
and they inbound defense, defense. near the baseline. Gigi's looking for a stop. Carlton looking to take up as much time as they can as Pokernick gets it across midcourt just in time, and she is slowing things down. Guarded by Katumbai. Drives. And don't know if that one was blocked or missed. And she's going to throw it out of bounds. That was Duvnik, but off the leg of, I believe it was Katumbai. So saves possession of it. Refs again will confer. We'll get the replay here. That was, yeah, that was Duvnik off the leg of maybe Payne or Katumbai. Shot clock is at 13. Oh, they're going to reset it now because I don't know if that one touched the rim. Quick substitutions here for the Ravens, and yes, no, we are going to set the shot clock at three. So Ravens have three seconds. And they did not know that they had three seconds, it felt like, because Donato, not much urgency there. So 55 seconds left. In that situation, Chris, you definitely have to know how much time is on the clock. Three seconds left. You have just three seconds to get the ball in and get a shot up. And unfortu unfortunately, Ravens didn't recognize that. Gigi's ball, and now they have an opportunity to go down and make something out of it. Yeah, timeout here called by Coach Jolie for the GGs. They're just going to want to talk about some strategy for this last few seconds here in the fourth quarter. So 54 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Gigi's down six. Gari, if you're the Gigi's and you're trying to run a play to get a quick basket or a three, what are you looking to see from them here late in the fourth? Absolutely. First, get the ball in bounds. Attack the defense. If they collapse, you got to kick it out and find your shooters. If they don't, attack, get to the basket, get a basket, and then get back on defense, get another stop, and do the same thing again. Hopefully that's the plan, and hopefully they executed it well. Diulio is the inbounder for the GGs. And they do get it into Suzokin. And nowhere to go, though. And taking up a lot of time. Drives. The jumper, no good, but he almost gets knocked out of bounds. Stays in from the Ravens. And now with 15 seconds left, they're going to have to do something here. And they are going to have to foul intentionally. There's Provo. The Ravens did a great job on that last possession defensively. They didn't give up anything easy. And they forced the GGs to use up a lot more clock than they would have liked to enforce the bad shot. So great job by the Ravens defensively. GGs weren't able to capitalize. And now the Ravens are at the line for two free throws. Pokernick from the line. 
Misses the first, she was four for four before this. And hits one of two. So Kun Ku now inbounding for the Ravens as it was two shots and possession. Gucci Provence the rebound. They're going to have to get this up quicker, the GGs. And Provo, the corner three. Short but gets her own rebound. The layup is good, but time ticking down. We've only got a five-point deficit and less than 10 seconds. So once again, coaches will talk about it. And we'll see these last 10 seconds tick down in a moment here on OUA.TV and on CBC Sports. Ten seconds left in this fourth quarter of the Capital Hoops Classic. Ball will be inbounded on the sideline for the Ravens. GG's will need steals and something very quick. Here's Duvnik, the inbounder. They're going to be looking for Callie Pokernik. And they do find her. And Payne going to get whistled for a foul. Once again now, eight seconds left. So these last few seconds are ticking down very slowly. Another point four off the clock there as it gets knocked out of bounds immediately by Gucci Provencher. Buisa the inbounder. Again, looking. And Keys Camp will get wrapped up. And she'll head to the line. The thing about this point in the game, Chris, where uh, you know the GGs are looking to make a foul, sometimes the refs may anticipate that a little bit too quickly and end up blowing their wrists a little bit too quickly. But nonetheless, here we are, two free throws for the Ravens. When you look back to when the GGs played Queens last weekend and big change to their fight at least tonight tonight against Carlton two good teams they played both of them without Brigitte Lefebvre Okonkou and much better performance from them I would say absolutely I think the the energy level was was different they seemed a little bit more confident today they seemed a little bit more poised their pace was a lot better but unfortunately it didn't end up in a win for them but they played tough both teams played tough and it was a great game to watch and Carlton ends up taking the Capital Hoops Classic, 66 to 60, their 10th victory out of 15 in this series between Carlton and the University of Ottawa. So we'll get a quick trophy presentation shortly, but what was the keys to Carlton's win tonight, Gary? I think they did a great job executing their offense. They were very consistent across the board. Uh, we saw um, her po the point guard was very good. Sorry, I'm, I'm missing her name right now. Her name is Pork Pokernik. Great player, great pace. She does a lot for the, for the Ravens, pushing the ball, pushing the tempo. 
finding open players as well as finding easy baskets for herself. I think that press bothered the GGs a little bit, which slowed, which ate a lot of clock off the time, ate a lot of time off the clock, and also was able to force some turnovers for the Ravens, which they capitalized on also. But credit the GGs, they played a great game, as we spoke about. A much different team than we saw last weekend against Queens, and this is good for them going going forward as they're headed in, getting ready to head into the postseason. So great game, great great game by both teams, and best of luck to them both as they, they continue with the rest of their season. The GGs now with back-to-back -back losses. They move to 15 and three on the season. They were the number eighth ranked, nationally ranked team in youth sports. Carlton was the second ranked team going into this weekend. They now move to 16 and two on the season. And here is our trophy presentation presented to the Carlton Ravens, and that's Keys Camp and Poker Nick. Wonderful moment, and here comes the rest of the team. Hard fought victory for the Ravens, again moving to 16 and two on the season. Winning the Capital Hoops Classic of 2023 66 to 60. Stay tuned for the men's action starting just after 8 o'clock. Expect a tip might be a little bit after that, after we clear out and get some warm ups. So stay tuned to OUA.TV and CBC Sports.